we know that you're not going to remember everything. That's, that's a given. You've got uh, the sheet that you have on garden links. Some of those, frankly, don't work now because they got some age on them. Uh, but th there's enough there that I think it's, it's uh, very beneficial. One of the things that I have been involved in the uh, last six years has been with uh, working with people uh, with disabilities, starting a business. And we've done some with uh, produce. And so some of this is going to apply to larger uh, ventures. Some of it will apply to our nursing home where we've got uh, senior citizens who maybe have moved there from the farm. They want to still be involved and there'll be a garden there. There might be some raised beds and so we're go going to look at some things so they can do that. We're going to look at some, some pathways, uh, raised beds, some equipment, and then I want to follow the, kind of bring to a closure a case study uh, that we did. Uh, so I'm going to put you to work some. We're, all, we're going to spend some time on, on our toys up here. Pathways, firm, smooth, and level. That even applies for us. Those of us who are mobile, uh, and if we've got somebody with a disability, we want at least four foot wide, uh, especially if we're looking at somebody in a wheelchair. Uh, we look at it also with a as flat as possible, but not over a 112 slope, which is what a ramp is. Uh, contrasting colors and texture. Vision impairments. And some of us, as we age, or get, go from no glasses to trifocals, it changes for us also. Well drained. Karen talked about resting. Have a place to rest if there's some distance. Here's some examples. Uh, one of the things that I, uh, when I'm making some recommendations, because most of the time we're looking at some economic parameters on it also. And an easy pathway is to put down a base of uh, gravel, limestone, and then over the top of it, put a couple of inches of ag lime, pack it, let it get wet, and it's almost like concrete. And it's cheap. But you got examples there of different surfaces. Uh, soft pathways, grass mulch, Compacted soil, there's your crust stone gravel. The product on the left, you'll find that in the toolbox, but it's a, uh, well, I've had peop people describe it as a cookie cutter, but it was designed to make pathways for fire trucks. If you've got a park and you have a lot of green space, but you need to get to, let's say we've got a, a community building. Holly, you've got a community building out in the middle and 
How do you get a fire truck out there? How do you get an ambulance? Well, in the, with the weather we've had, they'll get out there, get about 10 feet, and then they'll be stuck. This product is, the grass can grow through it, and it's firm enough for a, for a fire truck or ambulance to get through. Also makes a great uh, wheelchair path. Uh, we, get, we get some fellas that uh, in chairs want to get out and around. Uh, that's a Ventrac there on the right. Uh, they can go in, can uh, go into it. The, the gate there at the back of it is a ramp, all hand controlled. Uh, it's about like a chariot with a motor on it. Uh, runs 12, 13 mile an hour. It is possible to uh, come close to rolling it. But anyway, raised beds. Again, we get some of us with arthritis, and I'm, I've got osteo and rheumatoid both. Sometimes we can't get on the ground like Holly was pulling weeds. So one way to do it is to bring the garden up to our level. So, and that can be done a number of different ways. Raised ground beds, deep raised, elevated, terraced. This is a raised ground bed. Uh, you'll bring it up six inches to a foot. Uh, and I'm going to give you some reaches that are important even for us if we're putting a, a garden together and I've gone to, to doing some wide rows. If we're sitting in the, the valley there there's only so far over that we can reach. Same thing with somebody in a wheelchair. Two feet, that's, that's the, the distance you can reach to the side. Uh, if you get it from both sides, you can go four feet. If you're doing a circle, four foot diameter. We get into the height, two, two and a half feet. Again, those of you who work with people with disabilities in a wheelchair, 18 inches off the ground is as, <coughs> you better have everything up above that. Again, from one side, two feet, both sides, three to four foot wide, three to four feet on the circular. Same thing with elevated beds. Terracing or retaining walls. Get into some container gardening. Again, move it around. Uh, one good way of, of moving around. Put it in here and we've got more than, we've probably got two or three at home that we move around. Very flexible. Uh, you know, we've, we've had frost you know, in the last couple weeks. It's a way of being able to move it in from the frost. And with any kind of container you can use. Notice on the right, that is, there's a, a little, know how to ex explain it. You can pull that flower pot down to get to the level you want to. You could take, uh, put it on a, a couple pulleys and a rope and, and move it that way. Uh, the one on the left there, uh, those are styrofoam cups. Uh, that's one of one of my clients. Uh, 
we worked with, and we'll talk about him later in the case study. But that's how he starts them in the styrofoam cups and is able to move them around. Uh, real quickly, visual impairments uh, have a contrast in colors and textures so they can tell a difference. Wind chimes can help navigate a gentleman that can move around the farm by knowing where the different wind chimes are. Again, clear paths on the pathway and overhead. Uh, lay out of the garden, straight edges and right angles. There it is. One of the things that I'm sure everybody probably lines out the rows. Well, somebody with a visual impairment put different color tape on your stakes, and you can tell which one. Or use rubber bands and vary the number of rubber bands so you know which row is which. My version of the dibble board. Anybody got an idea what, what I use this for? It's my road distance. When I put my sweet corn out in the garden, this is my row width. You can do that several different ways. There's an example of, of your uh, rubber bands. An extra handle. Anybody else have it use an extra handle on a hoe or shovel? See hands. Okay. Sandy, did it help? The one that Karen showed earlier about the green ring and the two. Okay. Being able to put those in a position that accommodated me where I would actually hold the handle. Okay. Guys, if you shovel snow, you want one because it makes a difference. Now this is a scuffle hoe that I use in my garden. Uh, it's got a longer handle and I can probably double the time that I work in the garden with that extra handle very easily. Now next question you're going to ask, where can I get one? I found this one at Ace Hardware. This one can be ordered. It was this was like I said, Ace, and I got it for it was under ten dollars. <laughs> when I'm working in the garden, yes, I get, I sit, I sit on the ground, but I also, um, I got to sit up higher. That's a garden scoop. That's what this is. So 
let me read the warning on here. Warning, this vehicle is designed for slow speed and must not be used for free downhill riding on slopes or streets. I have not. I, I keep this in a locked room on campus. I can see one of our students taking that and uh, taking it down the, down the hill. But the thing I want you to notice is the difference in height. That one, it's a little bit low for me. I can get down there, the problem's getting back up. This one, that is too low. Again, I can get down, and I like how it, how it rolls, but it's a, it's a chore to get back up. Now this one, I got it at uh, Myers. You, it's got adjustable height. It's got slots here where you could put a pad on it. Uh, I think you could probably put a belt on it to where you belt yourself in and when you get up, you move and sit back down. Uh, I, that, that is mine. I've used it. Uh, it is still a little bit low for me to get up and down. Uh, I haven't used a belt on it. <laughs> There's your warning label. Here's another uh, scoot. Uh, this is actually with a commercial produce operation. Uh, but we get into some, you know, mechanizing. Uh, this is actually a uh, gentleman was spraying uh, herbicide uh, on blueberries. He was spraying the grass between the blueberry plants. Uh, a custom, custom unit. You've got a, a greenhouse there uh, on the right. Uh, that's, that's a cold frame the fellow's been using. Uh, an old truck bed and he's got some old windows on top. Uh, down below and we've, you know, we, we've all got weeds and that's one of the challenges of gardening. Uh, that's, that unit on the bottom left uh, puts down black plastic mulch and also irrigation line underneath it. Mechanized cultivators. Again, we you get some back issues. Uh, gentleman there on the left, uh, he's picking strawberries, uh, making it easier where he could. Uh, you got a small rototiller where you can do some cultivating. look at our case study here and then we'll look at some individual tools. Um, 45 year old man, left arm amputation at the shoulder. He's got two one acre garden plots five miles apart. Wants to expand the operation to increase the income to support his family and vocational rehabilitation services 
was willing to uh, help us help him do that current equipment got a pickup truck he's got a trailer to haul a rototiller which is a Troy built rototiller uh, rear tine got hose and shovels he's got a greenhouse that hadn't been put up yet and he transport produce and crates there's the two garden plots there's the greenhouse there's the rototiller there's his plants getting about ready for transplanting there's his crates Dusty Yes. Okay. Yes. And that would give them health, but it would be. He's, he's going to expand his produce business. Oh, so right. Mm-hmm. There's his cold frame. Uh, that's, there's his uh, garden maturing. There's what he was selling. He's using a hoe to make his raised beds. Now, let's back up. On the right, those are his raised beds. He's using a garden hoe to make those. What's that? Can he get a, a, a filler thing that goes on his field and make raised beds? Yep. Troy built makes a, a hilling attachment. We'll talk about that more. He has taped the controls on the Troy built rototiller to run it. Remember, he's only got one arm. After he harvests his produce off those raised beds, he's got to level those back out. He uses the rototiller to do that. And he has trouble using a hole and a shovel. Surprise, surprise. What equipment do you recommend and what procedures would you change? Or you have other questions about it before we get to that. Starts them in the house. The ones that you saw in the styrofoam cups. He hardens off in a cold frame. In a cold frame and puts them on, a, on that picnic table outside his house. Now also remember, he's only got one arm. <laughs> Rusty? He has gone down that path, and from my experience in talking with this gentleman, a lot of the arm amputees, they get along as well, or maybe even better, without a prosthetic. Mm hmm. Well, his, his amputation is 
clear up at the shoulder. Oh my. Mm -hmm. Other questions on it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very much so. Yeah, the, the control is up there on the top of that handle. Mm -hmm. And that's where he's got it taped. Mm -hmm. And if he wants to reverse it, he has to hold that one handle that's curved over. He has to hold that in to reverse it because it doesn't stay in reverse. You have to hold it in reverse. And that's hard to do with one hand. Well, it. I've got, I've got a. Hey, I I have a front tine Craftsman rototiller, and that thing beats me to death. For him, this is much better. And when my, when mine finally dies, that's probably what I'll get. That or one that goes goes behind my lawn tractor. Uh, it's new enough that he's not ready to get rid of it. Now there there are attachments that can be put on it. Like we said, there's a there's a rowing a healing tool that can be put on it. Nope. It is a regular hoe, which is a he hadn't done that yet. Remember Karen talking about the handles. That's one way of doing it. And it's cheap. And that worked for him, correct? Or it appears it worked for him. We'll talk about that. Okay. How much is his family involved in the whole process? He has a son, or I should say a stepson. And that's not even legal. He's living with a lady who has a son, has mental issues. Uh, he can't even get him to say garden, let alone help him. So that everything he does, he does himself. What's that? Oh my. Stubborn. Well, their, their relationship has, has gotten physical. They, there's been some, some blows involved. Let's, let's move on and then we'll 
look at some more of it. We looked at a healing attachment. And that was what I recommended. VR purchased one for him. It did not make the hill high enough for him. Yes, he did. And we recommended a heavy duty utility vehicle, uh, a reversible disc harrow. I'll show pictures as we go. Uh, a hoist to go on the back of the utility vehicle, uh, a precision garden seeder, and a power planter. Add on fist grip handles and arm supports for the hose and shovels, short handled fist grip hand tools, and a garden seat. Those are the recommendations. There's the utility vehicle. Uh, this is the first Bobcat utility vehicle that uh, we have, uh, my VR clients have gotten. Uh, what is unique to the Bobcat compared to a John Deere Gator is you can get a lot of attachments on it. Uh, it's a little bit dark, but there's a hoist. In the, in the front of the bed, there's the power auger. He can dig ho holes for his transplants one-handed without bending over. There's his garden seeder. It has multiple plates so that he can plant any size seed that he wants to. He can push it. it he didn't have a problem with it. There's the disc harrow that, that uh, we got. When we were looking at what to do, because we got to tear down those raised beds, he's got them in two different places. This disc, you'll see the one wheel there. That's, a, that's in the road mode right there. You can flip it over and you got your disc. He pulls that with the Bobcat utility vehicle. No, I, I think he just, I think he just manually lifts it. He could, he could use that, the uh, hoist that's got on, it's got on there too. The add-on fist grip handle and arm supports did not hold up. He put him, put him on his hoe and shovel and they didn't stay on. Uh, he frankly pitched them. The hilling attachment for the rototiller did not make the hills high enough. And uh, we were looking for a one, one bottom plow to pull behind the utility vehicle to get the, the hills high enough. He's close enough uh, to the Amish area where he can, I, last I talked to him he hadn't found one yet, but that's, that's where he was looking. Uh, production has increased, but he's not yet where he wants to be. Questions, comments? Steve, how much did VR cover and all that? VR paid for the utility vehicle, paid for the hoist, paid for the 
drill and, and power digger, uh, the planter, the hilling tool for the Troy belt. Not the harrow, though. Not the disc. Yes. Oh, yes. It, it also. Probably. Down in the Amish country, I would say maybe at a black smith shop. You could have one made. Mm hmm We were look we were looking for a one bottom plow to start with. Um, and it it's still a work in progress. No, he still does, still grows his own transplants. I was thinking about that. You know, here he's building these beds up each year and then pulling them back down. Mm -hmm. He didn't think about permanent raised beds that might even be what he a cold storage. You know, you might have a cold frame on top of them. He doesn't own his garden plots. Mm -hmm. Last I knew it, it isn't up yet. But he was going to get some help to do it. We did not. There you, <laughs> there's another. There's another one. Let's look at some tools here. <coughs> We've talked a little bit about planting, and there's the tiny seeds are difficult. And there's different, here's a, a dial seed sower. Uh, here's a tiny tim, where you, it's like a syringe. This is what I use. This is a old bacon bits container. And with your radishes and lettuce and so forth, very fine. Mix them with dirt, put them in there. You got holes there to, where you can sprinkle out the bacon bits. Use that to sprinkle out your seeds. Like I say, I'm cheap. So mixing it with dirt keeps it from all coming out at once. Mm-hmm. And, you're sp and you're, the way you're mixing it, you're not shaking out all the seeds at one time. Karen mentioned uh, pipe insulation. Uh, beautiful stuff. Cheap, but it works. Again, this is a power digger. Guys, if your wife wants fall bulbs planted, this is the way to do it. Tomatoes, cucumbers, and so forth. And noth nothing that we've talked about is custom specialized equipment. It's all stuff you can get off the shelf right now. In your handouts, you've got a list of some books that will have some adaptive modified tools. You're welcome to come up and look here. Um, one thing that I use quite a bit is this. Can somebody tell me what this is?
talked yeah. before. Yeah, we talked before. Any idea? Yeah, it's a seeder. Exactly. This is what I use to plant my corn. And again, remember, I've got, the, I've got arthritis. I've got bone spurs. Leaning over is an issue. I put my seed in my nail pouch, carry it with me. I drop the seeds one by one. I've got my spacing set so I know how, how far to, to plant them. Everything was, all of this was spare, quote unquote, junk in my garage. I hate gloves. Be flat out honest. I, I have had more difficulty with my fine grip. There was a time when it wasn't unusual. I had a Band-Aid on every finger, especially when I was raising hogs. But it's getting more difficult. So I've, I've looked for different gloves to use. Here's some what they call mechanics gloves. They're leather. They fit, fit close. Uh, they're not bad in winter, but you can, they can get cold. My dad gave me a, a pair of gloves that had the little rubber knobbies on them. They fit real close. I liked them. I wore them out. So I went on a, a mission to find another set of gloves like that. You know, I found these, but they're sloppy. They're real sloppy, so I, I don't care for them. I found some jersey gloves that have them. Uh, Ace Hardware, a lot better. Here's some, what some might call anti-vibration. They're bike gloves. They have the extra padding. So-so. Uh, Rob got some of the maxi fit gloves and there's literature out there. I've used them for about two weeks. I like them. I don't know yet how they're going to do in 85 degree temperatures because that is a that's an issue but it they give you protection. Karen was mentioning the different uh, tools and being able to change uh, links. I've got a, a tiller here. It's got a short handle you can use in your, in your uh, raised beds. But if you've got a, a bigger garden, you got the longer handle. You know, you might want to put that extra handle on there because it takes some pressure to, to get it down to work. Anybody tell me what that is? <laughs> it isn't broken. Pick nuts up. There's a lot of other things I think it could be used for. 
Um, <laughs> Here's another example of uh, a variable handle till, uh, tiller. Got that at, at uh, Menards. And you had this out enough to know how to operate it. Ratchet pruners. Again, the your grip is going to diminish. It's going to get more difficult. And this these will help do that. Here's another example of a tilling tool. Again, you've got your, your fist grip, just a different control there. Kneeling, you either go a pad there or knee pads. Again, something I hate but they work. Steve, yes. Mine has found the leather. Okay. 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 That's the kind of information that we need, knowing what works. We get into the fall or wanting to get into some early spring work. Uh, we talked about, you know, I talked about these gloves being cold. You can get some packets to put in there to keep your hands warm. When you're using equipment like the rototiller, or lawnmower or whatever, don't forget your ear protection. And eye protection. I've got different, different examples of, of ear protection here. Uh, sun protection, one of the stylish, I've never used this, in fact I bought it last night. Let's see you use it. Do you want me to tell you about the only question I've got one? Go right ahead. Okay. This one here is pretty unusual. Um, first of all, you have to have good, stri uh, good, uh, good strength to be able to take it apart and put it back. You gotta push from the sides. So if you have weak grips in your hands, you also have to be careful of it has a separate pin shoe. It's a nice tool, but again, it comes with some um, flaws. Uh, this can be used in two ways. You can either use it to sit down you're going to be a sit-down gardener. Uh, the beauty of this one is that you can flip it over and then you can be at knee level. Again, if you've not had those knee replacements or if you don't have osteoarthritis in the knee. Bad thing about this, if you're wide, you can get stuck. <laughs> uh, that's the unfortunate thing. Also, if you don't have good mobility when trying to get back up, you can already see when I'm trying to mm -hmm. push get back up, we can flip over and Flip forward. So if you're on medication or if you've been out there uh, pulling for a long time, um, you've gotten hot, you've got overheated, this is going to send you forward. Also, you can sit down with this too. But again, you have to have good mobility to be able to get back up once you've gotten down. That's the, that's the thing about this one. And this one um, does move around a lot, but it is a good tool and a, and a good device. There you go. Thank you.
two different things and then we'll we'll shut it down if you're working a table a stool makes a whale of a lot of difference it's more at your level the other thing is it is higher so it isn't as hard to to sit down or get back up so if you're doing some processing or or working at a table that helps a lot and finally how many gardens are close to the shed not very many <coughs> that's right you want to take as much as you can with you to the garden so you're not making trips back and forth again a five uh, five gallon bucket an old uh, luggage carrier and a bungee cord and you got it you're set Questions, comments? Well, I want to thank Steve and Karen both for 